everybody doing thanks for joining me welcome back so today I am doing a tag video it is the Fritzy elementary school tag so if you'd like to hear the elementary school tag then keep on watching I just wanted to pop on real quick and um, do a shout out Saturday and the shout out Saturday today is Rosa Beauty and Fashion. I have known Rosa for quite some time now. I've actually collabed with her quite a bit. Rosa's very creative in her videos. Um, she does obviously as what you hear, the name of her channel. She loves to do about beauty, but she also loves to do about fashion. You know, she gives you her tips, her thoughts and everything on beauty products. She is somebody who does love to do her Dollar Tree hauls. So if you are somebody that really likes the Dollar Tree hauls, she's a very sweet, kind, wonderful person. And also, um, sadly enough, she had just recently lost her uh, mom, who she was very dear and close to. So I am going to put her link down below for her channel. Please go and check her out. And if you'd like to subscribe and uh, also show her some love and everything. And then also um, I have mentioned before about the MAB group, that's the Middle Aged Beauties. Put all the Middle Aged Beauty links down below. Keeping it simple with Bridget is doing her giveaway now. It is her month. It's a $50 gift card to Sephora, plus also a lipstick of your choice. You do have to be subscribed to everybody in the group if you wanna be joined into the giveaway. And also comment, I believe, once on one of the videos that they have about the giveaway. I will put, I will actually put down below um, the rules to the giveaway and everything. Let's go on to the uh, Fritzy tag for middle school. Okay, so first of all, I was tagged by Mary Ellen after 60. I will put a link down below to her channel. She had tagged me for the Fritzy Elementary School tag which has been created by our beautiful Mary Glitzy Fritzy here on YouTube, which I'll also put a link down to her channel for both of them. So please go check those two beautiful, lovely ladies out. I enjoy both of them so much. I don't know if I have much Fritziness to discuss. To be honest, in elementary school, I was like Mary Ellen. I was in Catholic school. So kindergarten for me, was a very scary time in my life. I, I had a little bit of everything. I actually ended up finding my first crush. My first crush actually started in kindergarten and I mean it just went all the way up practically to I think sixth to seventh grade almost. I can think of two couple of things that I can tell you guys about in um, kindergarten. I had a teacher, her name was Mrs. Weaver. She wasn't a very pleasant teacher at all. She was um, rather too um, picky, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Anyway, um, so one time there was a whole bunch of us in the schoolroom and she stepped out for a bit and we were all playing, like we had our little playtime and everything as a lot of kindergartners do. So we were running around playing and you know how kids are, like we're jumping around and doing all kinds of stuff. And there was ABCs uh, above us that were, you know, made out of um, carbon paper or something like that. So like the ABCs were hanging down and everything. So we were running and tapping and jumping and, you know, like uh, hitting, hitting them and everything. And as we were doing that, I ended up, I don't know what letter it was, if it was like B or D or something like that, but when I reached up to smack it, it ripped. And I remember thinking, and I heard all the kids, uh-oh, because Mrs. Uh, Weaver, she had, similar to a ping pong paddle thing, or one of those that, like, where you, the ball was on it, and you'd smack it, and it, it was a wooden piece of thing, you know, but it was a paddle, actually, it was a paddle, so if you did bad, you did wrong, you got the paddle, and it actually, she put a sad face on it and tears on it, I will never forget that, that is something, you know, she did, so there I am, right in front of everybody, I got, you know, she put me over her knee, and she humiliated me in front of 
everybody, you know, like paddling my butt for ripping one of the alphabet letters, which now when I think about it was rather terrible and disturbing to me because I could see if I was a kid that, that was really out of control, but you know, I was, I was like any typical kid running and jumping and, you know, it affected me later on in school. Let's put it that way. And then for my crush, um, I rode the bus to go to my kindergarten school. One day I'm on the bus and this one boy, I don't know if he had an interest in me or not. I'm not sure. He wanted to sit by me and everything. I didn't really want bothered with him because he was one of them kids that like just wouldn't leave you alone. And I didn't want bothered. Um, here comes Mark, my crush. And he says something like, is he bothering you? And I'm just sitting there looking up at him going like, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's bothering me. Next, before I know it, them two, like, he practically, like, wants to beat the crap out of this kid. And I'm thinking, you know, like, I'm not thinking of the part, like, how bad that is and, like, you know, whatever and stuff. Of course, I'm sitting there like, you know, my hero, he's come to my defense. Bus driver, of course, had to stop and be like, hey, you know, that was my kindergarten year. First grade, I had Sister Benigna, that was my teacher. Very sweet, wonderful lady, I wonderful nun. She was just amazing. She was probably one of my favorite nuns of all in my whole eight years of Catholic school. So we were doing some coloring and I think I colored something wrong. It was like a test to whatever color goes to this and that, you know. So when uh, I realized I colored it wrong because I realized my mistake or something like that. I was real upset and everything and started crying and Sister Benigna couldn't figure this one out. She was like, you know, like you just colored it wrong. So she approached my parents and that's how later on things got to be found out that um, what in my experience was in kindergarten. So she made sure that it was a comfortable time for me in my first grade to reassure me that, you know, like, look, we all, you know, mess up, we learn from this and that. And yeah. then uh, we go into second grade, I had Sister Assumpta. Wow, was she something else? She, uh, she was the first nun I experienced where, like, I could always remember some of the boys in there, like, would, would just get a kick out of her as in, if you didn't pay attention into her class, she would literally like sometimes pick up some of the kids and like put them in the trash can, make them stay in the trash can, literally. I remember a girl uh, that used to always love playing with my hair. I always had really long hair. I remember actually the teacher would get mad because they'd be like, hey, you know, and like pay attention and everything, sister or something. Third grade, I had Mrs. Semensky. That was my first time not having a nun, just having, you know, just a teacher and everything. I really can't think too much of whatever happened in third grade, really. Um, just that I started struggling a little bit in math because when we got into the multiplications, I know they start earlier now, but when we start getting into multiplications and division and all that stuff, whoa, like that was just too much for this, this brain, you know? So fourth grade, I had Mr. Rizzardo. So he was my first male teacher. Ooh-wee! It was like I, I would hop and skip and jump from like a pleasant teacher to then like a wild one. You didn't want to cross him. Mm -mm. I was actually one of them kids, like other kids would try to pass me a note or do something and I, I, I would be like, mm -mm, mm -mm, you know, like I didn't want bothered because I didn't want to get in trouble. You know, he actually would take some of the kids and put them in a closet. Like I know that sounds so harsh, but that's kind of what happened in my school. It was crazy. Like if the kids didn't let, he'd get real mad at them, make him stand. I think the big one was standing in the corner. Which probably one of the things that really sticks out for me in fourth grade is my crush again. I got Valentine's Day cards from people, you know, in the class, like we always gave each other and stuff. But it was like, almost like that year, he, well, he gave me one and it was kind of, kind of let me know like, hey, I like you kind of a thing. And I remember I was so nervous because I thought, oh my goodness, you know, like he does uh, like me also or sees me or notices me, you know, and people would bring cakes or cookies or different things, candies, whatever. And someone passed out cupcakes that had like this 
uh, gummy, gummy heart shaped thing on the cupcake. So my Mark crush comes along and he wanted the cupcake. He wanted to have another cupcake. Well, you know, I wouldn't give that cupcake up, <laughs> not even for him. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You know, no, I didn't want to give it up. And I remember he was so mad, so mad at me for not giving this cupcake up. And then after that, it was like, he didn't really bother with me too. And then I felt like, gee, all because of a cupcake, I lost him, you know, or something. It was kind of funny. So, so fifth grade, I had Sister Tarsilla. Now she wore the full on, like, as you see nuns wear, like on Sister Act, like the full on thing. And she was up there. I think then she was even close to like almost 80 already. Um, something like that. She was, she was up there, but she still could teach. And I know she had some kind of accent. I'm not even sure where she was from. Like she was one of the ones that would take like a roller, like one of the little rollers or take your hand. Like if you didn't do your homework, I can remember this one kid, he didn't do his homework and didn't have the papers turned in in time. She had, you know, like smack the fingers and everything like shame on you. She is actually the one that got me into saying, when I say my prayers at night, like I do say prayers every night. I don't say them too much any other time, but I do say them at night a lot. And one of the things that she got me saying, because we said this in the fifth grade when we say our prayer for the day, praise be Jesus and Mary, now at the hour of our death, amen. So she got me saying that, um, and I've said it ever since. I approached my mom the one day and told her, that I needed some hamana beads. And my mom was like, hamana beads? Like, well, what are you talking about? And I told her, I said, well, you know, I'm sitting in the church and hold on to the beads and hamana, 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 hamana. And um, <laughs> she was like, you mean a rosary? And I'm like, I, you know, yeah, something like that. Because when you think about it, I guess as a kid, like, and most of the ladies in church or men or whoever, um, when they're in their pew and they're at the bench, you know, and stuff, they mumble. So obviously to a kid, I guess it would sound like that's what they're saying. Finally got my helmet of beads though, so you can know. Sixth grade, I had Mrs. Kinter. Uh, oof. She was, she was something else. She wasn't a very nice one either. Yeah, she wasn't very, very nice. But uh, Mrs. Kinter, now we did have a nice time. We had some kind of cookout at her house, which was really nice. I really liked being at her place because she had uh, lived nearby some woods and stuff. And there was an area that she had that like she had her fire pit kind of stuff. She had a pretty nice big yard. We played badminton, which was one of my favorite things to do. That was another thing when I was in Catholic school. We would have a movie and we would put it, play it in the cafeteria. We would sit and watch some movies. I loved it because like somebody would go around passing around candy, like, and it would be like almost like the movie theater kind of candy. Like I would either eat sugar daddies or babies or something like that. But you know, like, yeah, we did plays and everything. And I remember that year I was trying to learn skateboarding. Skateboarding, I think, started becoming a big thing around then. It was kind of new and whatever. Um, but I remember I was getting into that too. So like during our class, gym class kind of thing, we do that. I actually remember in gym, cl gym class <laughs> was the first time I learned to the whole thing, like where you take your arms like this and do that. We must, we must, we must increase our bus, the bigger, the better, the tighter, the sweater. Like, do you ever hear that one? Yeah. Like what kind of gym teacher did we have? I think about that now too. It's like, what kind of gym teacher did we have? Because then, you know, that's what we'd say. Well, we're, what are the nuns? We didn't give them any kind of, you know. Mrs. Kinter, like, well, this was like when I was starting to develop, you know, as a young lady. And I was getting some of my mustache hairs and things like that. And yeah, kind of getting the little odor thing going on, you know, under the arms. I guess she sent home a letter to my mom letting her know, like, tell your daughter to put deodorant on and shave her mustache kind of thing. Like, kind of being a little harsh there, but so yeah, that's kind of when I started learning a little more, like, you know, shaving and kind of starting to do the woman things and stuff like that. To seventh grade, I had Miss 
uh, Miss Pella was her name. Started my period then, which, oh my God, I cried. Literally cried. I can remember that. I bawled because I didn't want to be growing up, kind of, you know. I, I actually bawled. And I felt bad for her because a lot of kids really knew they could get away with a lot from her. Uh, they knew she could, they could kind of get on her nerves, like pick on her and stuff. And it was like they got a kick out of that. This one kid that came to our school, he, uh, well, he was bad. He was really bad. Him and his sister both came. <laughs> some of us girls, we ended up um, putting some, uh, and he didn't know it, like pads. Like they had the machines in there at that point. So I remember some of us putting pads on the back of his shirt, like the kind, you know, ripping off and sticking them and laughing. And yeah. You know. uh, one of the big things that sticks in my head though for seventh grade is I became a cheerleader for our basketball team for the Catholic school. And this is when I started experiencing a little division, realizing like there was cliques, as you they call it. Here I knew I wanted to try out to be a cheerleader. You know, I really wanted to do it. It looked like fun. It, it was so me. And the only thing is I knew I didn't know how to do a split. It was very hurtful because this one girl, I remember her saying, she was like, you know, she already pinpointed the three girls that wasn't going to make it. She was like, yeah, like Michelle's not going to make it. Shirley's not going to make it. Lori's not going to make it. So, you know, they, she had it like in the bag. She was basically saying that's, that's who was going to be there. And who was not going to be there. I remember I was thinking to myself, like, I, I kind of believed it. She almost made me, she almost made me feel and believe it to a degree. Cause I thought, yeah, how am I ever going to, because I don't know how to do, um, you know, a split. I did the tryouts and everything and it became my turn. And, you know, we all did our cheer. Like we, they, they had the cheers that they wanted us to do and everything. And so I was done, you know, like we had our numbers on and everything. The woman, you know, said the numbers that they picked. And my number was one of them. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I made it. Like, holy cow, I made it. I was so excited. But at the same token, the other girls were like pissed because I made it. Because their friend didn't make it, you know. And I come to find out the reason why she picked me was because I was so bubbly, cheery, like when I did the cheers, like I was real energetic and bouncy and just all into it. And yes, I did the cartwheels and all those other things and didn't do a split because I couldn't do one. I, she felt I was peppy enough and I was perfect for that. So for a while there, yeah, they were like kind of mad, but then later they got over it. Uh, so I did cheerleading and then I got accepted in eighth grade for cheerleading. So I was a cheerleader seventh and eighth grade. Eighth grade, I had Mrs. Simpson, I believe was her name. She was a really nice lady. I had so much fun. I think eighth grade was my funnest of all, but it was sad because like I knew once I graduated from there that I was going on to high school. I didn't like high school. Mrs. Simpson, I had her. And we, um, she actually, we wrote um, some stories and everything. She wanted us to do our creative side, you know, kind of a thing, like come up with a story and, you know, she liked my story so much. Like I got like a total A plus on it. And she literally liked it so much that she stood up in front of the class and read it to everybody because she felt that it was so worthy to read and let everybody hear my story. And they all liked it. You know, I was just like, oh, you know, that's probably the one thing I can mainly remember the most. I mean, overall, I would not change my Catholic school years though because they were the best times of all in my school years. I'm sure there's a lot that I'm missing, but that's the things that I could come up with and think about. I'm just gonna tag all of you guys if you're interested in doing this. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you are not subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button down below and you can join me each week. And as always, beauties, please remember to be yourself, love yourself, and let the real beauty shine through. So until the next time, take care. I will see you then. Bye. I love you. Bye.